welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Teresa, and tonight we are getting ready for bed. So let's get comfy and pull up those blankets and snuggle down with a pillow, and let's read our great bedtime story. And our first one is about a rather silly chicken named Lulu. I hope you enjoy it. It's called Good Night Lulu. Good Night Lulu by Paulette Bogan. Lulu climbed into her bed. Her mama tucked her in, fluffed her hay, and pecked her on the head. Gently, of course. There's Lulu getting tucked in just like we get tucked in. And who is peeking in through the window? Yeah, two piggies. Good night, my little chickadee, said Mama. Good night, my Mama, said Lulu. As Mama Chicken turned out the lights, Lulu called out, <gasps> What if a big brown bear comes in while I'm sleeping? Oh, sweetie, there are no bears here, said Mama. But what if there is a bear, asked Lulu. Lulu's getting a little nervous, and look, at who else is a little nervous? Yeah, it's those two piggies by the window. Let's see what Mama says. If there were a bear, then I would flap and cluck and scare it and chase it all the way back to the forest where it belongs, answered Mama. Lulu smiled. Good night now, my sweetie pie, whispered Mama. Mama, asked Lulu. Yes, Lulu, said Mama. What if a big striped tiger comes in while I'm sleeping? Oh, honey, there are no tigers here, said Mama. But what if there is a tiger, asked Lulu. And look at who's coming in the doorway. It's those two piggies. And look at Mama. I think she's ready for Lulu to go to bed. Let's find out what's going to happen if there is a tiger. <gasps> then I would pull its tail and roar and drag that tiger all the way back to the jungle where it belongs, answered Mama. Lulu giggled. Look at Mama. How silly is that? Good night now, my little pumpkin said Mama. But Mama, what if an alligator comes in while I'm sleeping? asked Lulu. Oh, my little pookie bear, there are no alligators here, answered Mama. But what if there is an alligator? asked Lulu. Look who snuck into the barn. The two biggies. If there were an alligator, then I would stomp and yell and chase it all the way back to the icky, sticky swamp where it belongs, answered Mama. Lulu's eyes were getting sleepy. But Lulu sat up one more time with a smile on her face. Mama, what if the pigs come in while I'm sleeping? <gasps> Uh-oh. Who's in the barn with Lulu? The pigs. Oh, what is Mama going to say? Mama turned back to look at Lulu. Oh, my little darling. Did you say, what if the pigs come in while you are sleeping? Lulu's eyes widened. Do you see the pigs? Yeah, they're trying to hide underneath the blankets. Let's see what Mama's going to do. If those pigs come in, then I would grab them and tickle them and squeeze them and kiss them all over their faces. Guess who's going to get tucked in bed? Yeah, the piggies just like Lulu. And then I would tuck them in and say good night. And so Mama Chicken did just that. Lulu's tucked in, and the two piggies are tucked in. 
and Lulu and the pigs were all comfy cozy now and almost asleep when Lulu said, Mama? Yes, my love, sighed Mama. I love you, Mama, laughed Lulu. And Mama answered, Good night, my little Lulu. I love you too. Look at the piggies are asleep and Lulu is close to being asleep. The end. What a great story. I think Lulu just wanted to drag bedtime out a little bit. And speaking of trying to drag bedtime out a little bit, we're going to read a story next about a little girl and some sheep. So let's see what happens in Can't Sleep Without Sheep. Let's see if this little girl is counting sheep to get to sleep. Can't Sleep Without Sheep by Susan Leonard Hill. Ava had a hard time falling asleep. Her mind was so busy. There's Ava with a flying doggy and looking at her soccer ball and wait a second, is Ava tucked in? No. Try counting sheep, suggested her mother. So she did. One sheep jumping over the fence, two sheep jumping over the fence, three sheep jumping over the fence. But her mind was full of ideas and questions, thoughts of today and plans for tomorrow. Night after night, the sheep had to jump the fence many times. Look at those sheep. They're all wearing nightcaps and jumping over the fence. Can we please stop? Asked the sheep. We're exhausted. No, I need you to keep jumping, said Ava. In that case, said the sheep, we quit. You can't quit, said Ava. How will I get to sleep? Don't worry. We'll find a replacement, they promised. <gasps> no sheep jumping over the fence? What is going to happen? Horses seemed like the best choice, but they were so beautiful that Ava made the fence higher and wider to see how well they could jump. Horses are too much fun, said the sheep. We need somebody less pretty. Send in the chickens. Oh no. The chickens, they tried to get over the fence. They wanted to get over the fence. Uh oh, are those chickens getting over the fence? No. Ava laughed and laughed, but she did not go to sleep. <sighs> we need somebody less ridiculous, said the sheep. Pigs? Let's see how the pigs do. The pigs were not in any hurry. One pig over the fence, said Ava. Then she had to wait a while while the others stopped to snack. <sighs> pigs are too slow, decided the sheep. Look at those piggies. One's eating a sandwich. Looks like one is taking a nap, not helping Ava get to sleep. <gasps> the cows were a complete disaster. Oh no, look at Ava. She's on her bed kind of hiding behind a pillow and the three sheep are hiding behind the bed and here comes the cow right through the fence, not over it. This was harder than the sheep thought, but they were just getting started. Oh goodness, let's look at these animals. We have monkeys jumping over the fence and turtles and penguins and a bear and a hippo and a moose and a flamingo. And do you see the giraffe and the elephant? So many animals. The penguins, they look 
looked at the fence. Then they looked at themselves. We need a plan, they said. <gasps> Look at that, the penguins built a catapult. Zoom goes our penguin. Uh-oh, one lands in the bushes and one bangs right into a, you got it, right into a sheep. Next, said the sheep. The hippos waddled forward. This could take a while, said one sheep. Look at how they're trying to get those hippos over the fence. They're using a big crane. I don't think the hippos are going to work. The animals grew impatient. Is it our turn? asked the herd of buffalo. No, we're next, shouted the flamingos, the armadillos, and the beavers. We'll see about that, roared the buffalo. Oh goodness, look at all those animals. And the stampede began as the buffalo charged the fence. Dust rose in clouds, splinters flew everywhere. It was chaos. Oh goodness, look at that fence. Look at the flying armadillos. Look at poor Ava. She's on her bed, definitely hiding behind the pillow. Stop, cried Ava. I'll never get to sleep like this. Hmm, I wonder if Ava has a plan. Wow, said the sheep. Who knew we'd be so hard to replace? I knew, Ava replied. You always show up for work. You line up nicely and jump calmly. You're fluffy and peaceful and perfect. Well, said one sheep, it's nice to be appreciated. Please, will you stay, begged Ava. I need you to help me fall asleep. Don't worry, said the sheep. You can count on us. So she did. Look at who's back jumping over the fence. The sheep. And who is fast asleep in her bed? Ava. The end. What? A great story. Why don't we read one more? But let's see, are we still nice and comfy? Nice and cozy, snuggled up in our blankets with our pillows? Excellent. Why don't we read a story all about DW, Arthur the Aardvark's little sister. Good Night DW by Mark Brown. It was time for bed. Dad tucked in DW and gave her a kiss. Mom turned on the nightlight. She gave DW a kiss too. Good night, DW, they said together. DW tried to fall asleep, but she couldn't. She was wide awake. Is anybody out there? She called. Arthur came in. What's the matter? He asked. I can't sleep, said DW. When I can't sleep, I think about one of the bionic bunny's adventures, said Arthur. That always tires me out. I bet the bionic bunny has trouble falling asleep, said DW. He must have a lot on his mind too. Arthur rolled his eyes. Good night, DW, he said. I've got homework to do. Look at the bionic bunny. He's sitting worrying about the news. Is anybody out there? DW called again. Dad came in. What's the matter? He asked. I can't sleep, said DW. Try counting sheep, said Dad. Nice fluffy sheep jumping over a fence. Let's see if it works. Oh, did you ever wonder about sheep, said DW. When do they sleep? 
They must not have time if they're so busy jumping over fences. Dad sighed. Oh, good night, D.W., he said. See you in the morning. Look at those sheep. They're tired, just like the sheep from our last book. Is anybody out there? D.W. called a third time. Mom came in. What's the matter? She asked. I can't sleep, said D.W. Just relax, said Mom. Think about happy things, like going to the beach. Oh, but whenever I go to the beach, my bathing suit gets full of sand. I could never sleep thinking about all that itchy sand on me. Her mother shook her head. Good night, D.W., she said. Close your eyes. Hmm, let's see if D.W. can get to sleep. D.W. closed her eyes. She tried thinking about the bionic bunny and the beach and fluffy white sheep. But of course, none of it worked. <gasps> Is anybody out there? This time, everyone rushed in together. What is it now? asked Dad. How do you expect me to sleep? said D.W. The wind is blowing and the bed is creaking and Kate is making weird sounds. Wait a second, let's look over at Kate in the crib. She's fast asleep. D.W. stopped to blink a few times. Besides, a tree could fall on the house and there could be a monster under the bed or in the closet or both with D.W. Yawned a giant yawn. I think someone's very sleepy. There are a gazillion reasons why I can't fall asleep, said D.W., closing her eyes. I could go on and on and on. And she did. But look, and she's fast asleep. D. W. So she went on and on, but only in her dreams. Good night, D.W. Good night to all of you. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.